I think it's probably about time for us to get started. And um, um, this day we're starting with um, some wonderful songs. And Mark has got uh, music for us. And we've got several things to start that should remind you of uh, summer camp and the times that you spent as a youth possibly, or as, as an adult with as a counselor. Um, but I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Um, and then seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then I've got peace like a river. Uh, so let's come to sing together. Okay. <laughs> One, I gotta warn you. All these songs are in the key of D, but I'm singing them in a different key, so all you musicians, just bear with me. Also, I'm having a technical difficulty with my guitar, so if it suddenly goes out of tune, it's because there's a string that doesn't want to stay in tune. I think it's the heat that's getting to it. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so let's do this. And let's do <laughs> oh, that's okay. this. All right. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where well, down in my heart to stay, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart, I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. But the peace of pass is understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've had the love of the down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the wonderful love of the blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of the blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. You're done. <laughs> All right, let's go to this. Yeah. This one's a little slower. See first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Alleluia, Alleluia. ask and it shall be given unto you Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Hallelujah, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. 
I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Thank you so much, Mark. As we light the peace candle this morning, I invite you to think of a piece of scripture that talks about peace and pe the place of peace in our life and in our world. Peace I give to you, says Jesus, not as the world gives. Christ's peace be with us all. Debbie, we don't have slides with this, but would you like to lead us through the, uh, the, the uh, memory verse and see if we can say it uh, without looking at our pages afterwards? <laughs> okay. Our memory verse today is Matthew 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. So without looking, <laughs> look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Personally, I'd like to see what everybody comes up with as, you know, motions for, you know. There you go. Look at the birds of the air. Yep. They neither sow nor reap. Reap. And yet you yet are. Their heavenly father feeds them. Sorry, I can't lean over my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for, for doing that. We, dear friends, then let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, you call us to offer up concerns for the world. And so we pray for the church, the world, and those who are in need. We are thankful that you do not abandon what you have created, but continue to make your grace known among us. We thank you for those who have chosen to speak your reconciling word in this age, and we pray for the faith to receive it. Blessed are you, caring God, who hears the cries of the poor. You see the tears in the eyes of all who mourn. You know the pain of those in anguish, and you come to the side of the lonely. So call your church to compassion and service. Blessed are you, God of peace, for you call us to make warfare cease and to place our trust in the one who bears us up. Give comfort and courage to all refugees. Raise up peacemakers among all peoples and confound those who place their fortunes in weapons. Blessed are you, God of justice. You desire that all be one. Erase prejudice and class divisions, we pray. Bring strength to those who are persecuted and heal those who believe that destruction is the path of righteousness. Blessed one, 
Turn us to your ways. Make us bold. Increase our passion for what is good. Inspire us with the witness of those who have gone before us, whose faith shines through the ages. Into your hands we place the welfare of all for whom we pray. We trust in your mercy, and we pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, let's do maybe another song here. Oh, for crying out loud. Let all earth of now living a song of thanksgiving. God the Creator triumphantly raise, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, by guiding us on to the end of our days. God's banners are all us, your light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night. Till shadows have vanished, all fearfulness vanished, as forward we travel from light unto light. By law God then forces the stars in their courses, the sun in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the depth of the ocean proclaim God divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with glad adoration, a song let us raise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to God in the highest hosanna in praise as we come to our unraveled text for today and today's message i invite you all to join me as we come to god in prayer oh god creator of heaven and earth out of deep waters you brought us to birth claimed us as children of wonder and worth O oh God of deep flowing water. Rispa. I didn't tell you that in this season of studying unraveled texts of the Bible that you'd learn something really not really new. I mean, a show of hands. How many of you actually have heard of RISPA before, and that doesn't count the Bible study who learned about it this week. The story of RISPA. To set the story up, David is anointed king, and this is well after he is found in the field tending the sheep and declared the king. This is as he has risen to adulthood. He is anointed king while Saul is still the king over the land. David and Saul's son, Jonathan, are this close. 
they are together and they understand one another and they understand why Saul must no longer rule the land. And yet Saul is ruling the land and there is a great deal of battle that goes on between them. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Rispa, daughter of Iha. And Ishbael said to Abner, why have you gone in to my father's concubine? A concubine, she is much like the third wife, the second or third wife of King Saul. She is, the heirs are legitimate, but they aren't going to inherit anything. It just means that there are more children to do all of the things that the kingly palace might require. And that introduces us to the first of four times when Rispa's name will be mentioned. Between now and as we go to the 21st chapter of 2 Samuel, there are indeed great wars that happen between King David and people in the land and King Saul, as he continues to try and keep the land safe for himself. In fact, many of the battles are against David. And ultimately, Saul and Jonathan are killed in a pitiful battle. And their bones the bones of Saul and Jonathan are kept hostage by the peoples. Now, in the 21st chapter, now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. The Lord said, there is blood guilt on Saul and on his house because he put the Gibeonites to death. Blood guilt meant that Saul was still guilty of these murders. So the king called the Gibeonites, that would be David, and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not part of the people of Israel, but a remnant of the Amorites. Though the people of Israel had sworn to spare them, Saul had tried to wipe them out for in his zeal for the people of Israel and Judah. David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? How shall I make expiation that you may bless the heritage of the Lord? The Gibeonites said to him, it is not a matter of silver or gold between us and Saul or his house, neither is it for us to put anyone to death in Israel. David said, what do you say that I should do for you? They said to the king, the man who consumed us and planned to destroy us so that we should have no place in all the territory of Israel. Let seven of his sons be handed over to us, and we will impale them before the Lord at Gibeon on the mountain of the Lord. The king said, I will hand them over. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Saul's son, Jonathan, because of the oath of the Lord that was between them, between David and Jonathan, son of Saul. The king took two sons of Rispa, the daughter of 
Ai'a, whom she bore to Saul, Armoni, and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Merib, daughter of Saul, whom she bore to Adriel, son of Barzillai, the Methilite. He gave them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they impaled them on the mountain before the Lord. The seven of them perished together. They were put to death on the first day of the harvest, at the beginning of the barley harvest. Then Rispah, the daughter of Ai, took sackcloth and spread it, sorry, and spread it on the rock for herself from the beginning of the harvest until rain fell on them from the heavens. She did not allow the birds of the air to come to on the bodies by day or the wild animals by night. When David was told what Rispah, daughter of Aha, the concubine of Saul, had done, David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan from the people of Jabbath Gilead who had stolen them from the public square of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hung them up on the day the Philistines killed Saul on Geboa. He brought, them, he brought up from there the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan, and they gathered the bones of those who had been impaled. They buried the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan in the land of Benjamin in Zelah, in the tomb of his father Kish. They did all that the king commanded. After that, God heeded supplication for the land. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. A land filled with famine, a land that is barren, a land that seems to unravel even as they look at it, a land that once was prosperous and now isn't, and the king makes a deal. The king, David, makes a deal with those whom God has given to him. The king makes a deal with those whom King Saul had wronged, one that did not value life. The Gibeonites are making a statement by publicly putting to death these sons of Saul in this way. And Rispa, Rispa the concubine, two of her sons are included in this number. Rispa. For me, Rispa joins the very short list of really gutsy women in the Bible. The story of the persistent widow before the judge. The exchange between the Syrophoenician woman and Jesus about the crumbs from the table and dogs. And the story of Rispa. They lived their lives, all three of those women, most unraveled. Rispa, Rispa mourns her beloved sons and she doesn't spare anything in that. She does it most publicly and that simply wasn't done. There was a certain amount of public grief, but not for so long or for so long in public. She makes a place for herself by these poles of impalement. She places a cloth on the rocks there. 
and she spends all day scaring away the birds and all night scaring away the wild animals so that the bodies of those whom she loved would not be taken. She lives, fully lives in this grief and the unraveling of her life and of her son's life. Rizpa lives in the wrongness of the decision of King David. She is a no one of such low status. Again, she's a concubine. She's the second or third wife of Saul. Her sons really aren't that important. They cannot inherit anything. And King David hears of her grief. King David hears that she has been there at the site of the death of her sons and four other sons of Saul. For up to six months, she has lived in this unraveling and David sees her grief and he recognizes her unraveling. He recognizes her witness and he does something. He has the bodies carefully removed and he gets back the bones of Saul and his beloved Jonathan. And he buries them all with the ancestors. In this story, Rizpah certainly is calling on God in the midst of her unraveling. She's most certainly doing that. But like the Syrophoenician woman who asks for bread and Jesus says, ah, get it off the floor, the crumbs. And she says, even the dogs eat the stuff off the crumbs. Are you making me like a dog? And that persistent widow who stands before the corrupt judge day after day after day, pleading her case and calling for a favorable judgment. Rispa, in the midst of her life unraveling, is calling out to David. And friends, this is what we do. This is what we see even in our times. Certainly the protests and the marches that we have seen in the last month are calling out to God, but they are also calling out to a culture which allows racial profiling, a culture which allows people to say some are worth more than others. A culture which does not fully embrace Paul's words. In Christ there is no male or female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. Yesterday was the Poor People's March in Washington. Well, Due to these times, it wasn't in Washington, it was online. And I spent part of the afternoon listening to some of the speeches, remembering that that's what we're called on to do, is not just cry out to God for justice in the midst of these things, but cry out to the unjust situations and peoples in our life and in our world and say, this is not right. It's a call for injustices to be righted. When we see those marches in the streets, 
we must recognize as people of faith that they are deeply biblical, deeply theological actions, even if the people doing those marches don't recognize it. They are crying out for justice in the face of great injustice. They are calling out for justice in the midst of lives and livelihoods being unraveled. And they are calling out not just to God and not just to the officials in our lands, but to the church as well. They are RISPA calling on us all to right what is wrong, calling on us all to stand for justice and wholeness, calling us all to be different and to act different in our world. That is the last time we hear of RISPA. But she joins a long line of gutsy women in the Bible. Some whose names we know. Rispa, Deborah, Miriam. And some whose names are simply by definition. The persistent widow, the Syrophoenician woman. but they all teach us the same thing. The time for the unraveling of our lives and the lives of this world is now. And we are to call on not just God to assist us, but the powers of this world to hear our plea. May God give us power to do so. Thank you, Rispa. Amen. We would invite you to consider your offerings, um, those things that you bring to God. Um, those gifts that you have that you share. So remember to put those in an envelope and send them into the church or sign up for uh, direct debit so that those can come out of your accounts on a regular basis. You can also sign up for online giving. There are so many different options and um, we hope that, um, sorry, we hope that uh, if you have questions about any of those ways of giving, you speak with Bill Hasselbarth because he would be more than happy to um, talk with you about um, all of those and uh, how to give to the church uh, even now. Let us join in prayer, let us pray. Holy God who gives life, nourishment and strength to all creation, we thank you for the community of faith you have built, for your servants who have held fast to you through the centuries, for the teachings and witness of our ancestors, for the gospel's welcome to all in need, for the healing that comes from your watchfulness. Bless these gifts that all may be nurtured in truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I would invite you to pass the peace by sending chat messages to one another. Um, experience that um, on your screen as we talk about some of the announcements um, and the life of the church. Pass the peace amongst each other. The peace of Christ be with you all. Um, note that there are the things that are happening that are the regularly scheduled things in the life of uh, the church. And um, we, we would hope that uh, 
you could uh, be a part of the many things that are happening from uh, Bible study, making connections tomorrow afternoon, and they will be looking at the text for next Sunday. Um, you can join that in Zoom, and that information is in your announcement section of your bulletin. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there is a uh, uh, midday prayer on Wednesday evening. We will have something um, at 7 p.m. Um, in the way of evening prayer and or Vesper sort of service. It's, uh, it's a good thing. I've received a note pop up. Um, yes, as long as we're going to be in the sanctuary, it would be a wonderful thing to have flowers. Um, we had the deacons meeting this week and Bev Montgomery at the deacons meeting offered uh, to get these flowers today in uh, remembrance of loved ones. And so if you would like to be uh, giving flowers, now would be the time uh, to contact the worship committee. And um, I am not sure if Debbie and Katie are able to take care of that at this point. Um, yes, we are. Yes, they are. So let them know um, that you would like to give flowers and um, we'll go with one because uh, we aren't seeing uh, the whole of the chancel. We're just seeing a portion of it. Um, so we'll go with one display of flowers. And again, those will be taken out to the shut-ins um, after worship is over. Um, are there other announcements um, that folks would like to share? And again, I can't see everyone, so I don't know if you've raised your hand. It's, okay, it's Betty. Um, Debbie, can you hear me? Debbie, you're on. I'm, I'm unmuting. I'm unmuting. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. 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 Deb, okay. Deb, I went to the church and I got the list of um, people that had already signed up for flowers. Uh -huh. So there is someone going to be doing, someone is doing it next week. I don't know, I think you and I have got to talk about um, if you want to follow through on that or if you want okay. me to. All right, I know we can as talk. the deacon, I'm going to be yeah, If, bring if you guys would chat about that and just get back to me so that we can include a note about it, um, that would be okay. great. Yep, we can do that. Okay. Other announcements? Well, friends, our worship has ended, but our service begins. So go out in peace. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Go peace be with you. Go and spread the word. Go and spread the word. Tell the good news you heard. God Peace be with you. Go around and spread.